Hello, good morning, happy Thursday. Uh, let me switch my mouse over to this computer and we're good. Uncle Scientist, hello. Uh, how are you doing? It's been a while. Um, I don't think I've seen you. Have you been streaming in the morning? Or at least morning for me? Um, I don't remember if, uh, if I saw you on, on the list. Um, you haven't streamed in a couple weeks. Okay, okay. Well, hopefully everything is going good. Um, those are those are always interesting proje projects. Um, let's see. Just do. Got to get back into it because of Advent of Code. Yeah, you were doing all the Advent of Code stuff to prepare for this next Advent of Code, so we can't miss that. I think I've done like two Advent of Code problems uh, before and uh, I don't know, like the challenge, the challenge type coding stuff, I've never really been very good at. It's um, sort of strange, or at least it feels that way to me. Um, that might be, that may be more like a very specific type of problem solving that I haven't practiced very much. So it takes me a while to get back into that. Whereas business app type problem solving i do that all the time um okay so today is going to be a little bit different uh instead of going into more axum stuff and recording some more videos uh, maybe this year they'll have a build an app using you and rest problem yeah i'm 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 sure they'll do something like that um yeah yeah it's, uh, that definitely definitely that'll be like you know, 10 stars, right? Like 10, 10 of their stars, I'm sure. Build a will build a web app for, for Santa and his and his reindeer. Um so um air running. So we have I have I got this issue the other day, uh 10 days ago, and then I um then I I didn't notice it because I hadn't been looking at my notifications on GitHub. So ugh. I didn't realize that this was 10 days ago. I thought it was only like Monday. Sorry about that, uh, Saifi, or anybody else who has been doing it. So we want to fix this sooner than later. So um, basically, we've got a report saying that when we do this, um, it's trying to do some learning Axum stuff, uh, which is not right. So my guess is that in my Docker Compose, I don't have... Um, I don't have an Axum, like a profile on Axum. And the way that Docker Compose works is if you don't have a profile, it runs on everything, even if you give a profile for this one. So the easiest solution for this will be to just remove, uh, remove Axum from here. Okay, so let's close you all down. And especially since I'm not putting an Axum stuff into the Docker Compose. Uh, so if I so Rust Axum, well, you do have a profile here. Uh, maybe there's something else. So Node.js Express. You're fine with that. Actually, all of you seem to have. Okay, you have profiles. So, hmm, Rust, uh, Rust Axum has a profile here. Mm hmm. Okay. So now, build path. Okay, so it's trying to build the path. To something like learning Axum here. Now, if it's looking for learning Axum, can I find that somewhere in here? Ah, oh, no, I just closed the file. Okay, these are the only two places for it. I'm, I'm gonna fix this by just removing Rust Axum. I, I don't think that this is necessary. We don't teach it. 
So I think that you should still be fine. Um, if I, what are you upset about now? Okay. You were upset about that. I fixed you. Let's let's try this. Uh, let's do a uh, Docker compose. Let's do a down. Ooh. Okay. So never mind. I've I've broken things. Cool. Let's let's put this all back. Let's do a Docker compose down. Additional property start period is not allowed. Oh, I need to save it if I'm going to undo it. We'll do it down. Um, I'll remove the volume. So complete reset on that. Uh, let's also expand everything because it's possible that that And I know there's collapse. Uh, oh, that's not the same thing. Um, so what is the equivalent of doing that in the command palette to like make it make it go? I thought that was oh, it's a fold. It's unfold. Unfold all. There we go. So here's rest axum. I want to get rid of you. Okay, no errors. So let's do a, this command. Aha, API test depends on undefined service Rust Axum. Oh, that's what it was, API test. Okay, so even if it wasn't the same profile, it was attempting to run it because there was a depends on or requires or whatever it's called. So um, API test depends on Rust Axum. There we go. Let's try this again. Um, API test depends on, oh, you like my jacket? Thank you. It's one of these, this is one of the, the nice sort of like keeps me warm without having too many layers on jackets. Um, okay. So invalid compose project service API test depends on undefined service rust axum. I thought I'd delete Oh, I took out the profiles part of it, but depends on Rust Axum, that goes away. There we go. Okay. Need to actually read what I'm doing. All right, let's try this again. There we go. Now, now we're going to be working. Okay, so I can commit this. So we have um, fix docker compose um, file to work. I guess just fix docker compose file. Okay, Webpack is still building. I'll go ahead and push that up because I could just do another commit if necessary. Okay, app is running 
at localhost 8080. Uh, is it is it local host 8080? I I do wonder about that. Uh, if I do a Docker ps. Oh no no it's not 8080 it's 49796. because I don't map the port. Uh, and I don't remember if I, if I state that in the course or not. So if I go to this port, here we go. Everything is working here. I got a complaint uh, about the design for this. And basically it's like, this looks terrible. You should, you should make it better. And I, I agree. I, it does look terrible. Um, I am. So I, I finally, I finally found a designer and I'm working with them for the LMS side of things for future courses. And, uh, part of, uh, working with them is going to be not really like a full design system, but a lot better sort of like understanding of design. And, um, I can build, I can build components maybe even a component library properly, you know, for the first time uh, that has good design. And then we can come back. Maybe we can do like a little micro course to um, update the design of this uh, with you. Um, wait, be a back-end engineer and be a front-end US expert at the same time in this economy? Well, I mean, if you think about it, it's um, if the economy isn't great then we want to be more to get hired because otherwise somebody else is going to say yeah i can do that and then they get hired so i would say like especially in this economy like when things come um one of one of my mentors once said that he had said well that's not that's not what i do he said that one too many times for his liking he's like ooh, that's um Someday I'm going to lose an opportunity that I want because of that statement. And uh, so then he just, he learned, he learned, um, he learned design. And then he's like, oh, okay. That wasn't that hard. Um, and it's, uh, like, it's something that like I, I want to learn too is like, I, I can do the, the CSS stuff. I, it's like knowing what is good design is just practice. And that's what I haven't been doing. I've been focusing on other things recently. Okay, so I've got I've got you set up. Um, I don't package lock got updated, but I don't think that's necessary. So I'm going to I'm going to update you. Oh, I have to sign in to this. Uh, hold on, let me find let me find that comment in another browser in which I am signed in. And I pushed that to main, right? I think I did. Okay. All right, so um, I fixed the Docker Compose file and it doesn't Cause an error when um, running the up command anymore. Let's just do this full one. Command. Okay, so I will um, I will close the comment. Okay, excellent. That was that was um thing one to do with that. Now thing two. Um, Ipswich. Uh, I um, Ipswich on Discord. 
uh, went back and forth with them on uh, the the U. Let's see, it was the the U server in Discord about uh, forms and um, U ducks and some other things, and they asked me, um, would I be willing to help figure out how to implement a basic form using form data? So let me um, let's let's see if we can implement something really quick. Oh, I know, I need I need the uh, not this open up. Uh, I want to implement what is it called the um, my playgrounds workspace. Yeah, this other one. Um, hello, Chantilly. Am I going to add that the port number is not really eighty eighty? I I I want to say that I I put something in there to like state that it wasn't eighty eighty. Um, I can't remember anymore because yeah. Uh, because like it's going to be a random. It's going to be a random port. If I remember correctly, I did that in order to... Oh, so we could have both of them running at the same time. That's what it was. Oh, right. Because he's using... Uh, this person is using um, the profile JS view as opposed to like the U profile. I think the next time we do a course, I, I don't know if I'm going to do a... Um, I, I probably... I don't know. I'm I'm going back and forth. I don't want to move that over there. This, this is fine over here. I want what do I want? I've closed all you up. I think my Docker sort of my my Docker strategy is probably going to change. All right, opening up some playground stuff. Uh, let's head into. Uh, code, um, Brooks builds playgrounds. Yeah. Okay. So I have U radio. Um, let's just do another form. So I'll do a cargo. I know this is really small. Sorry about that. Cargo new, um, U form. Actually, this is really U ducks form. And we're going to bring that in here. Am I just missing it? Oh, it's this is the wrong playground. I have two playground folders. One, no, I wanted a code. Brooks builds this playground. Udux form. There we go. That's what I wanted. I have two playgrounds. One for one for just sort of generic stuff. One for um, one for these things. Uh, okay. So we want to open up view, and we're gonna do a Cargo, add you. Um, cargo add you ducks. I bet I'm gonna need websys and the other stuff, but if I just do trunk serve, we'll we'll figure out the rest of it. Oh, uh, I need my index to HTML. Okay, let's try trunk serve again. Okay, so you'll compile. Uh, we're gonna make a really quick, easy um, form. I probably don't need too much because it's gonna be relatively similar to get values out of the other, the other um, form inputs. Do okay, so. We need a library 
and maybe we'll just have like a, I don't know, I'll do a form. Okay, so we'll have a mod form. Um, I want a, a pub, pub function app. I'm trying to now remember to switch into to you stuff again. HTML. Um, Kafka, hello. HTML, use that. Uh, not exactly use that. Uh, we're gonna have, um, I guess I'll just have like a main tag. And then we'll throw an H1 in here. Um, and we'll just do this as like udux public form. Okay, so. You are a function component app. Then back into main, we'll have you start app app. Okay, so that should also be running on 8080, I believe. or act just is running on 8080. So here's our Udux form. Uh, to make this dark mode, um, I can just turn on dark mode for this. It's fine. Okay, let's start by making our form thing here. So we're gonna do a uh, use u prelude star. We have a function component call this um, uh, a DB form. A function um, form. I don't think we need to take in anything. We're going to return HTML. Uh, and we'll have we can't have an H1 in this because we already have an H1 on the page. So this has to start with an H2. So we'll start with a div and then we'll go with an H2. Uh, and then this will be a um, the actual, like the form. All right, so with the form, we're gonna have an input tag. Um, I like to put them under form groups here. We're not gonna do styling for this because that's out of scope. We're just like trying to focus directly on what we're going for here, uh, which is gonna be handling data from the form itself, as opposed to like each of the individual form elements. Like, is that possible? Um, I, I do remember that it is possible in JavaScript, uh, although it's been forever since, I, since I've done that because I always used like an Angular, in Vue, and in React. I always did the thing where I would just um, update the model, update the data as each element got updated. So it's this has been a while. So um, we're gonna create an input. So let's have, we'll have a label. Um, we have a for, this is, I don't know, what's our first input? Like maybe language? Um, for language. Label our maybe favorite language, favorite language. Uh, then we have, oh, right. And this is usually, well, we can do left and right. That'll be fine here. So we have input um, ID is going to be equal to language. Um, We're going to want a name is equal to language. Uh, type is equals to text. And I don't know if I need anything else. So if I just save you, and then we're gonna come back to the main library and we use you. So use form db form. And we have 
DB form like that. Okay, here's Udex form, the form, our favorite language. So we can obviously put Rust here. Um, but I want to, I want to, when I submit this, to maybe like display out what that is. So in back in form, we like you should actually just be a form tag and a form tag there. Uh, I want to do something on submit here. So like when we submit it, I want to get this. Um, that being said, um, let's first, like one of my favorite things to do for like sort of debugging, sort of like understanding this is I'm going, I'm going to use the interactive console. There it is. So I should be able to find, here's our form. So if I, if I select you, I come back to console and I do dollar sign. Oh, that's not okay. That's that's a Chrome thing, I think. Using console. Oh, weird. Okay, so temp zero is this form. Okay, okay. Temp zero dot. Um, I want to. Let's. Bring this over to the right, to right. What I want to do is I want to get the contents of this. So if I just say, you know, Rust, uh, can I do temp zero dot, like, what do I have here? There's attributes. I can get the children, but I, if I remember correctly, there's a way to get all of the, all of like the form data off of here. And I guess that's, I guess that is just form data. Oh, I bet, I bet I'm going to want to do something with a, um, an, a, an event. Okay. So hold on. Let's, let's create a button for this. So inside a form, we're going to have, is this big enough for you? Let me make that bigger. So we'll have button. And we'll have a submit. Okay, so there's our submit button. That's literally doing this. Let's now, um, okay, we'll do a, um, I like to use vars when I'm working in here so I can just reuse the variables and just like keep on doing a var statement. Otherwise, let is like actually forcing me to do good programming, which, you know, come on, we're in the console. I don't, I don't need to do good practices here. Um, okay, so if I want our that button, so if our button, or I guess like it's the submit equals, uh, I want query, oh, it's document dot query selector. Uh, this is the only button on the screen. So if I do that, submit is that button. So I want to add event listener. Add event listener takes in, I think it's a click. Oh, I probably want like, um, mm, no, not, not that. Our form equals document that query selector. I want the form dot add event listener on submit. Uh, run, we're going to have event, I want event dot prevent default and okay. I also want, um, just a console dot log 
uh, form submitted. All right, one thing at a time. Okay. I don't think that'll actually create them. I think that overwrites the event every time, but let's find out. So if I put in Rust and I put in submit, there we go. Form submitted one time. It doesn't happen three times. Excellent. And it doesn't refresh the screen anymore. So we're, we're good there. Now, um, I want to grab what this is maybe from the event here. Uh, so let's go to MDN. So MDN form data submit. Let's see what they say. Form data object lets you compile a set of key value pairs to send using XML HTTP requests. It's primarily intended for use in sending form data, but can be used independently from forms in order to turn the key data. Um, the transmit data is in the same format that the form submit method would use to send the data. The, okay. But I don't know if I'm going to be able to, that doesn't sound like I'm going to get that out because I can just create form data and append it, but that's not exactly the same. Hmm. Okay. So I don't want form data. That's incorrect. So I want maybe form. So if I get the form element and I specifically want on submit, uh, submit, the input type submit, form element submit event. Uh, fires when the user clicks a submit button, okay, or presses enter. Yeah, so this is literally what we did. So here's our, oh, they literally have nothing. Oh, input tech text. Okay, I was gonna say like, they don't even have an input, but it's hiding in here. So they're not doing anything with that. Hmm. Uh, okay, so from you, form, see, now this is interesting, get element by ID, well, the log is just that P tag, so that's not really helpful. The form, they're getting the element by ID, the form itself, so they could then do the add listener. They're not really showing data off the form. Okay, so let's, let's try just a Google search for this. So um, get uh, input data or input values from form node um, on submit event, HTML, JavaScript, just throw in all the keywords. I mean, so W3 schools, I usually don't like looking at their stuff. Like there, there's so many of them that they also get wrong, which is ironic. Um, Stack Overflow, it's from 2021. So maybe that's gonna be okay. Yeah, so like this is literally just going straight to the, the thing.
Now you get this new form data and you can pass it into form. Oh, wait, so can I create a new form data, pass it into form and, oh, maybe I can do that. I can also serialize. I don't think I've ever done serialize before. But okay, if I do a new form data from form, that might give me the ability to get it out again. Let's try it. So if I if I do var data equals new, actually this is gonna be inside of here. So I want to say something like, um, Probably after the event default, we'll do lem. This one I can do const because uh, I'm inside of a I'm inside of a um, block. So okay, uh, we're gonna have our data equals new form data. We pass it in event target. That gives me the form data. And then let's just console log the data and see what that is. Okay, form data in here has entries language rust, okay? So can I do data dot you don't know what this is. Interesting, you know that it's, I mean, it should know that it's form data, but it doesn't, it doesn't tell me. Um, oh, you know what I can put in? Uh, after this, let's do a debugger. That will pause the browser and I'll be able to now watch and like take a look at what exactly is his data here. So I'm now in this scope, so I can actually just look at data. So data dot, so we have this entries here. Oh, there's also a for each. And keys, and I can also set, oh, and there's values too. That's a function. Uh, form data. Oh, it's an iterator. Okay. So dot entries. Which is also an iterator. Okay, so I need a loop over this. And then I can display it. So to grab this out, Let's let's go back to MDN. Uh, so pen entries returns an iterator, iterates through all key value pairs contained in a form data. Get returns the first value associated with a given key within a form data object. So get might work. Whereas, oh, get all also returns an array of all the values associated with the given key. Oh, interesting, in case there's more. Okay, so I can do get, and then I believe that's gonna be based upon name. So let's, let's try this. I, I do data.get, and I want, Uh, this is language. Ah, there we go. And that gives me Rust here. So if I create this form data, I can now do get on it to get the content of this out. And then I would be able to stuff that into UDUX. So to get to get each of these things. Now, let's let's imagine that I had a second input here. Um, I can just, uh, yeah, I'll just do this. Okay. So what's, um, what's something else we have? 
we have language um we have maybe like your favorite um i don't know favorite browser browser Okay, so we have U2. Let's reset this really quickly. So I want to add in U here. And so I don't need the debugger anymore. So I now know how this is going to work. So I want to now do a const our language, for example, is going to equal to data.get language. Um, const browser is going to be equal to data.get browser. Um, and then I want to console log those out. So language browser. Okay. So if I set you, uh, form is not defined. Oh, this form is not defined. The right. Okay, hold on. Uh, I want uh, our form equals document dot with selector form. Okay, there we go with that. So if I say Rust and I say um, Firefox, there we go form submitted, here's Rust and Firefox. And if like instead of Rust, we did, I don't know, Python, Python, Firefox, we do Chrome. Okay, Python, Chrome. So I can now get the values out of here using form data. Okay. So how to now do that exact thing that we did here. We're going to create a callback for this. So let on submit equals callback from, we're going to have our event, which I can never remember what type of event it is. Let's throw this into here. Submit, please. Why why do you do that? On on submit. It's a focus event, right? Okay, focus event. So I call in there. All right, so we're gonna first start by prevent defaulting. Um, and the next thing is I want to get the target. Oh, so if I want to get the target and it actually is a form HTML event, we need websys. Uh, I think it's web. I think it's websys. But uh, let's go. Let's go find out. Uh, they have a section here for. I think is it advanced topics more where where was this it was was it under events oh yeah yeah typed okay so typed looks like yeah web sys so i want to use js cast Okay, so I need wasm bind gen, which gives me JS cast. And then I also need web sys for everything else. Okay, so I want wasm bind gen and then web. Um, ooh, I can't remember. For web sys, is that a dash? Okay, wasm bind gen first.
Um, I don't think I need any of those things. So then, um, now if I do web, oh, okay. Web sys, uh, HTML input element. Um, I actually want a, like a form element. Let's see what they have in here. HTML form element. There we go. Okay. So I now want to turn this into a form. So equals. So it's like event dot target dot um you're super unhappy. I need Rust Analyzer restart. Okay. There we go. Okay. Re event dot target. I want to uh, cast into what was that? Um, it was Wait, I forget. I forget what it was called. Um, target unchecked. I want to say, yeah, that's probably what it was. But there was another way to do it that I keep on forgetting. Um, we do. Oh yeah. Unchecked into. Unchecked into. Okay. Oh, we could also do use a node rep. I, I, I have not really used those very often. I didn't really use them. I didn't really use nef or refs very much. Uh, web sys says cargo, a uh, web dash sys says cargo search, but I guess they do translate between, I, I hope so. Otherwise I just grabbed something else, which is not, not great. We should, we should check that to see if like I can create a, um, a crate with a dash and a crate with an underscore at the same time. And if, if cargo would, would consider those the exact same, because that would be a horrible squatting method for, for hackers. Um, okay, so I want this target. Okay, unchecked into. Okay, so target dot unchecked into. And here we do an HTML form element. So let form equals, uh, you are super unhappy. Um, the method unchecked into it exists on the type event target. Uh, wait, a target gives me, oh, it's an option. So I have to unwrap here. So unwrap. No method name, unchecked into, found for struct event target in the current scope. The method is available for event target here. On the following trait. Oh, I need to pull in. Import JS cast. Okay, there we go. Okay, so now I have, uh, I now have the HTML form element. Next, can I create the data? So I want form data. The fact that I'm not getting any autocomplete here. With the official creates you can't register underscore if dash is already a crate. Okay, that is really, really nice to know. That's that's good to know. 
Um, okay, so if I want to use, who would this be? Would this be web? This is websys, right? And I want to find, oh, I want to find form data. So the form data class, this is under form data features. Okay. So Okay. Maybe. There we go. Okay. Form data. Um, so I can do from, but I could also do new. Oh, and look at this. New with form. Okay. So new with form. And that takes in a reference to form. Hey, okay, excellent, excellent, excellent. So now we have data here as a result. So let's unwrap you. Uh, data is now a form data. So let's say I want our language equals, let's do data dot. Okay, I wanna do a get. Okay, this is gonna be a JS value, but we know exactly what type of value this is. So this is gonna be language. Um, now I want to do this as, as a string, because we know that this is a string because it's a input type and all input types are strings. So, uh, let's do an unwrap or default on you. Let, uh, browser. Get it at get. Browser, let's do this as an as string for default. And then we'll do a, uh, we need glue uh, so I can console log easily. Okay, so glue. Okay, that we have language and browser. Whatever. Spelling, spelling is hard. Okay, so this should happen when we submit the event, and we should it should literally be exactly the same thing. We can we can add in here. Um, event from Rust. Okay, so if I say. Uh, favorite language, Rust, favorite browser, Firefox. Yeah, event from Rust, Rust and Firefox. So we've now extracted it out with a single thing. So we don't need multiple callbacks uh, to get to get this and to get you. Okay, got a little bit of time left. What if we have a, uh, a non-input type? So a... Um, take you let's do let's see we've done um, browser we've done language what else can we do we could do um, OS so for OS favorites OS um, let's instead of a input let's do a is it select 
Um, I think it's select. Yeah. It's select with options inside, if I remember correctly. So it have an option. So, okay, you would have an ID equals OS. An option, we'd have a value equals, uh, this would be something like Mac. Um, is it like that? Option value equals uh, Windows. Option value equals Linux. I know, I know, there's a lot of different variations of Linux, but this is what we're going to go with. Uh, that's not right. So I think, I think each of these options is closing like this. What about the plan nine users? Free BD, free BS. Free BSD. Um, yes, I know. I know there's so many different variations of everything. Um, okay, so we would be Mac. Uh, we could be Mac like that. Uh, come on, stop that. You would be Windows. You'd be Linux because there's only one Linux, right? I'm just gonna leave it at that too. Okay, so here we have. Oh, that that's that that's lovely. Thank thank you. Interesting, I chose that one as the default option. Okay, um, so let's now grab this out of here too. So I don't have to add another on submit. We have you already. So we're gonna do let um, OS equals data.get. Um, we call this, oh, there's no, there's no name. So I think name equals OS. OS, unwrap our default. Um, oh yeah, then as string. Okay, as string, unwrap our default. Um, does the button work like that? Yeah, it should work like this. It should work. Oh yeah, yeah. So um. In, in HTML5, uh, as long as you have a button inside of a form, it works exactly like an input type submit. And you don't, like they're, they're equivalent of each other and you don't need to worry about it. Um, the, big, the big thing is that buttons can also be outside of forms too. Uh, so it's actually one of those, like if you're not expecting it to do the, the submit, then you'll be surprised when you know it does the submit. So that is that is what happens. Um, okay, so we have we have you. I want to now put in OS here. Um, okay, so if I do Rust Firefox, um, we keep it on Linux. We have Linux, Windows, Mac. Okay, excellent. All right, that that's working just fine. Now, what if I have a Boolean? A Boolean would be something like a radio button or a checkbox. So, a radio button or a checkbox. So, um, what would this be? Um, let's see. We'll do, we'll call this stressed. Are you, are you stressed? 
it's a trick question because the only answer is yes these days, it feels like. Um, you are going to be a, we'll do a radio. So input type equals radio value equals yes or uh, stressed. Um, in that world, hello. Uh, let's see, input type radio, value equals stressed. I, uh, oh, name equals, okay, so the name is gonna be the same no matter what. So name is gonna be equal to uh, stressed. I think that's it for that one. We duplicate you and is not uh, not stressed. Something like that. And I guess like this doesn't need to be a space. Not stressed. This could be whatever I want. The name, the name is good not to have a, a, a space in there. Okay, so name is stressed. So now again, this is not really like this is all this is all a string coming back. Um so Type radio is not really feeling like it's going to be that different for me. So like stressed equals data dot get stressed as string. Uh, unwrap our default stressed. I forgot to give the label of like yes or no. So you don't know which one you're doing. So we have stressed and not stressed. Okay, great. Um, also have those empty strings there. That's fine. Um, okay, a Boolean would be an actual checkbox. So let's try, let's try that. Uh, so checkbox would be, um, I don't know, happy. Are you happy? So input type checkbox value. So if I don't put a value in there and I just do a name of happy, then we can check you or not. Uh, okay, so what do I get back here? Happy equals data dot get happy. Um, as bool unwrap or default. Let's let's find out what that is. Default would be false every time. Okay, so I'm I'm really curious about this one. So if I check you, that's false. Oh, this is failing. This is failing. Because it's not really a Boolean. So as bool is always returning a none. So therefore we get the default because I bet you're a string. Now, can you be an F64? Unwrap or default. Yes, uh, so that's exactly the same thing. That's always a none. So as a string, I believe is going to work. But, oh, it's on. Ha. Um, it's on or nothing at all. Okay. That's the default there. And then if I put a value on this, I think it would give me the value. So value equals yes, I am happy. Yes, I am happy. Otherwise, empty string. Um, okay. 
The only other thing, if we take our um, if we take our favorite browser and we turn this into instead of text, you know, we turn this into a number. So type number. Um, if I just do that one, can I take, so instead of browser, we'll just do, I don't know, favorite, favorite number. So we have browser, so now it becomes number. Now I would like this to be an as F64, if, if possible. Let's find out. So I'd say you're like, at, I don't know, 12, let's say. See, that's still a zero. That's still a zero. But if I do this as an as string, we get that, we get that out of it. So something to be aware of, and this, this hits people all the time when working with types, uh, even if you're working with like something strong, like a type the type uh, script, um, forms always comes in as strings. That's it. Like even even a checkbox, which you would think would be a boolean, comes in as a string. Uh, so something to be aware of is that it's just it's always a string, even if it's even if the type is a number. Just don't worry about it. It's always a string. But this seems to be a way for us to now grab this out. So um, I'm going to I'm going to put this on up. Uh, it's 812, so I've got a little bit of time. Let's um let's commit this. So I've got all of you going. Okay, so uh, our commit here is we have um. I guess like getting a getting form data using form data. Uh, the big sort of thing to realize here is in cargo toml, we need we need the form data and the HTML form event to then grab this stuff out here. Okay, so if I push you up. I should be able to now find you in here. Playground, Udux form. I never even did Udux as part of this, uh, but Udux is really not necessarily something you need to worry about for this. Okay, so I'm gonna copy you and let's see. Oh, it's Ipswich uh, joined the Discord. Okay, so help. Let me reply and just say, uh, let's see. Um, working on all this fun stuff. Here we go. Okay, so um, which I just got data from. Wonder like can I can I remove like the sidebar? Can I move the sidebar? Can I move this other sidebar? Does it really matter? It might not matter. Okay, I'm I'm trying to see like what I don't know what things in Discord I need to keep like super protected or not. Uh so I'll just I'll just note down Okay, so I just got data from a form in U uh, using um, form data. Um, I didn't get the Udex part, but that should, um, but like storing into Udex, into a Udex store, shouldn't really change anything. It shouldn't really change. Um, the complication here, or like the difference here, is extracting the data from the form itself. The data from from 
the form itself. Um, code is at boom. Okay. There we go with that and perfect end, end stream time too. Okay, so. Um, it's which, oh, hello. Um, I was just responding to you on Discord. Uh, late to the party. Yeah, so I do I do these streams on um, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday morning. So that's usually like when you see me uh, respond with like, hey, I figured it out. It's usually after that time. So yeah, we just wrote this. We just got the uh, the form uh, the form data thing going. It's a little bit weird, um, but it I think it solves your problem. We didn't do anything with Udex, but I Udex is not really necessary for sort of understanding what's happening here. Once you get it into like actual uh, variable, then you can store it into Udex pretty easily. So hopefully this should help out and like give you the answers that you need. Uh, and then besides that, I don't really, I don't really have anything. I don't really have anything else from this. I'll let you sort of poke through it and uh, ask, you know, ask any questions you have in the Discord channel and we can get back to you. Otherwise, tomorrow, I think we're going to go back into Axum again. Yeah, we're going to go back in Axum again. Somebody else on a, a YouTube comment asked if, like, about drag and drop with, um, with files in you, but I'm not really sure exactly what they mean. Like, dragging files into the browser or dragging like cards back and forth. I'm asked a little clarifying questions for that. So until we get that answer, uh, we're going to be back to Axum tomorrow, which is going to be great. So with that, uh, thank you all so much for uh, hanging out with me today. Uh, as we figured this stuff out, um, today is Thursday. So I will be back tomorrow for more Axum. Have uh, have a good one and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.